Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? This is season seven of Vodafone Health Line, where the main focus is on women and children's health. Yes, uh, season yase last week in Kwa, and so Ghana for say, one more catch the Vodafone for say. Vodafone, semo de aba, yen su ya sum, ni ya jia kunya, ayet nase, edi ashemo. It's another episode, and my doctors are ready. So ready. Hi. Looking all fresh. <laughs> and ready for you. All right, doctors, you're welcome. Hi, Gloria. Thank, Thank you. you. Gloria. Thank you. Um, we started last week. So have you had any, um, anything from our viewers yet? Oh, yes, I think uh, people enjoyed the first episode. Uh, and, you know, some of them just are just so happy to meet you. Like, oh, they saw you on TV. Oh, they see you in real life. So oh, wow. I think that experience is good for them. And they're really enjoying what we're actually educating them on. And yes. what are your expectations? Oh, you well. think they will yes, I mean, embrace it? The quality that's going to come out of this program, I think it will be beneficial to everybody who spends time to watch. So, yes. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look, I promise. Yeah. Someone crying, crying. Oh, no, no, people are very happy and <laughs> they told me today they are just all set waiting to see the show. I yeah, know, so right? So we're also I ready know. for them. I know. Okay, so our doctors are ready. If you are ready, let's go straight to our street doctor. And then it does wash our street doctor, no, or walk room. One of the walk room. And until I drink, I said, and ask a question, be our walk. I hope I said, doctor, for you, no, no. And now no or deba bro. And unti uh say ni be no koswa na baby a wano be a weni ye pa e be an a street daughter a bushi no a be pio or be pio wa wa pomu dia sem be sebi or beso be sebi ya eh or de beba ha ama ye ya no ama kama 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 and ye no kwa and ye ma be brain a waso ye be sha health corner and no ye sha ya pomu di ye di diemu ya ye ta ye di di be brebe ya ye ni di ni ni na o me sha maye a fe nso ye bra e bi nso wa ho na e ne se tie ni wono so be chire se ne be ya ye be tene tene ya pomu kakra na bibia ye kama street doctor ye ready ni e ka se pi ye nko fa nemra hello so person bisa ya sin bi ba ma 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 so person bisa ya so, uh, Ofori here has an interesting question. He said he wants to find out if constant or frequent ma <laughs> masturbation can cause a depletion of your sperm. Right. So, Ofori, get any Sperm. Research will be Ah, yeah, yeah. I found that video. That is, Spam will be as a who uses spam now, but in the soup of the spam. In the near like I said, who bits me a master of the amount of spam in the ass. In tea, but only young with our mom wants to do most of your most of you. May you see your most of it. Okay, Sylvester. <laughs> Masturbation. Well, I mean, the straight answer to Ofori is no. Uh, masturbation does not necessarily deplete all your sperm stores and make you infertile, no. What happens is, unlike in, in women where you are born with a pre-pack number of eggs that with time or each time you ovulate, the levels are reducing. In men, we are fortunately producing almost every two to three days, you know, so it's a constant flow of production. And so the sperms are produced and stored in some reservoirs. So each time you ejaculate, you've just emptied some of the reservoirs. Quickly, they get filled up. Mm. But it only becomes an issue if the man who is constantly masturbating and wasting the sperm is in a relationship where they are trying to achieve pregnancy. Oh. You can imagine in that case, then you're not making the sperms available to fertilize the eggs for the woman to get pregnant. But just masturbating which we don't encourage anyway, except for medical reasons. For instance, if you came to the hospital and we need your sperm for some analysis and you think the only way you can get it is to masturbate, fine. Or we need it during fertility treatment to fertilize your partner's eggs, fine. Otherwise, no, it does not, but we don't encourage it. You just say, uh, uh, <laughs> just me, my TV view, my TV say, Yes, say, say, a man with time, much. 
I am a tita I am a girl. This one, it's not true. It's not true. I'm sure probably uh, the guys are just using it for an excuse so that they can probably do some things. Mm -hmm. But there's really no link between the sperms being accumulated and the brain to cause a headache. It's far from that. I mean, there are so many people who I can say they, they abstain for quite a long time. And I'm sure our hospitals are not filled with young men who are saying they've got headaches. So it's totally <laughs> not true. It's not, it's not related. <laughs> okay, on that note, let's go back to Street Doctor. Uh, Sylvester. Hi. 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 Wow. I brought you this report. I say so. I want to be with you. So I just said, Doctor Shen, I'm going to be you. Yeah, Street Doctor said, "Oh, we'll be for fro. I can't hunt you know. You're back. What we say? Nipa na ekrado na yaji ono. No, we're still at the art center. Um, found somebody else who's also willing to ask us a question. So let's get close to him and find out what his question is. Hi, boss. What's your name? Uh, my name is Shoka. Ah, Shoka. So let's hear your question, Shoka. Okay. Um, doc, I want to know whether there is um, breast cancer in men. Okay. So yeah, Shoka. So as you can obviously see, in women have bigger breasts than, than men do. In fact. Even in adult males, uh, the size of their breast is smaller than uh, women, girls before puberty. But there's still breast tissue. So once there is breast tissue, there is a possibility that there will be breast cancer as well. So yes, there can be breast cancer in, in, in men too. So, but guys in the studio, what more do you want to add uh, to the answer uh, for Shoka? What more do you want to add to the answer? Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Sylvester has done a good job at uh, you know, answering him. It's true that, yes, you can have breast cancer as a male. Naturally, when you're born as a male, female, you both have breast tissue. But then obviously after puberty, that for the girl begins to grow bigger, okay? But once there's breast tissue, a man can get cancer of the breast. But this is very, oh. very rare. It's oh. not common. But then having said that, it's very important that the men also observe themselves. Because if you notice mm. a lump in your breast suddenly, which wasn't there, appear, Mm. and you realize that the skin around that area is changing or probably even having breast discharge. I mean, oh. these are signs that could point to cancer. But the good thing about this is that it's actually, if you pick it up early, something can be done about it. But commonly, it's more found in the older men than rather in the younger men. So I think, yes, indeed, men can have it. Um, as a doctor, I've seen a couple myself, which, were, which was quite interesting or surprising. So let's be careful and not think that, okay, it's only for the women, but also check your cells once in a while so that if you see something out of the ordinary, you can bring it to the hospital, we check it. If it is, we can do something quickly about it so you can be safe. I mean, I'm saying men maybe, I remember they normally more more breast, no, chest, no, yeah. But you will maybe be so my case, yeah. What more no fun also, I will buy to so pa. Na, and no, and no, now, I mean, say, one share, yeah. A behano na na se obi a se flat wey e den e obi timi e nya. Oh, Gloria, I know the flat or full. I know the mm. it's different. There's a difference between normal breast tissue, whether yeah. it's in a normal woman or an obese man, mm. and then uh, tissue that is breast cancer. I know it feels different. It's distinct. I mean, who feel who examine a one now be home? Into like the way you will feel, you know, and examine the breast. Men should also learn how to do it. And then when you yeah. notice a difference. You should be weary of it and report to the hospital. Ah, any young queen, and say shock and pesce breast cancer be a bit shocking. And tea, may I show us by now they were tears here. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, Shaka. What a shock. Thank you. See you. Wow. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Vodafone Healthline. It's season seven and you're short of quality health care. Proudly brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready? Me catcher must say, Ebidum Rebia, Yabako J, Yapo Mudi, and I say, Ebako Shay, Yedidia Mukakra. Na, and no, a ye, a ye, Jumedia Bakwa, a wash show you so. And with your brass, na, your nutritionist, and so, I a crowd one my pa, and eh. And near my brain is this one table, no so. One more and beyond Ben Reddy and Bia me, dear Nim dear, a common de me pa. And to Mummy Uncle Honey Uncle Shay, dear Reggie and Nefrema, a word of my Hi, hello. Hey, I'm off in a jarry museum. Yeah, that's it. 
you well, one, welcome once again to the Health Corner with us. Um, so they want to talk about cancers and nutrition, or nutrition and cancers. Cancer trends are increasing all over the world, and Ghana is no exception. If you take 10 people who have cancers, did you know that four out of the 10 actually have diet-related cancers? That's preventable, by the way. And another thing, diet-related cancers are only second to smoking causing cancers and that smoking is number one so you know what I mean so this means that your diet plays an important role to your risk of cancers so today I want to take you through how your diet can help you or can reduce your risk of cancers mm. now I want to start by mentioning overweight and obesity mm. the world cancer research has shown that about 13 different cancers um, can be increased in somebody who is overweight or obese. As you can see on the screen, there are various cancers starting from tumors in the brain all the way to cancers that are associated uh, with the blood. What it means is that by maintaining a good body weight or reducing your weight if you are overweight and obesity or obese, remember we'll be talking about overweight, overweight and obesity later on into detail. High consumption of salt has been associated with stomach cancer. Now, when I talk about salt, it's not just any salt at all. All you need is about a teaspoon in a day. Yeah. That's about six grams of salt in a day. Yes. However, the research was focused on the college Chinese-style salted fish. Yeah. Chinese-style salted fish. And if you bring it to our part of the world, it's what we call the kaku. 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 But as nutritionists and dietitians, we are not taking out Kobe, Kobe. either. All right? Kobe. Just be careful how much salt you put in your food and the salty things you're adding to your food. It makes it nice, but please... Let's be careful. Remember that salt also does not only reduce, increase your risk for cancers, salt can also lead to increased risk to hypertension. Mm -hmm. So take care of your salt. Mm -hmm. Now the other example is moldy cereals, mm -hmm. grains and legumes. Examples um, of uh, cereals, grains and legumes include rice, include um, maize, millet, sorghum, groundnut um, and beans. Now what is known is that when they are moldy or that's when they are rotting ones among them, these rotting ones can have what we call aflatoxin, mm -hmm. and aflatoxin increases your risk to liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that before you use these grains and legumes, please take your time and take out these moldy or rotting ones from them to reduce your risk to aflatoxin exposure. Indeed, and the other one is red meat. Red when meat. I say red meat, I'm not talking about chicken or fish. They are white meat. Now red meat is like the goat, the cow, and the rest, Indeed. okay? Yeah and processed meats. Yeah. All these increase your risk of bowel cancer. You want to be careful with those things. Don't yeah. overdo them. I would say stay away from processed meat, but if you must have red meat, just have it in moderation. So by processed meat, remember the sausages, mm -hmm. and the burgers, the corned beefs and the rest, and so mm. on and so forth. Now the good news for me is that there are also foods that actually protect you from cancer. Now the first example is fiber. Mm. Fiber can be found in whole grains and cereals and also fruits and vegetables. Mm. Now fiber has been shown to reduce the, um, reduce the risk to colon cancer. Indeed. And then there's another one, lycopene, which is found in tomatoes and any red fruit or vegetable. They help protect, especially men, from prostate cancer. So today, we have brought what is here? <laughs> rainbow colors. The rainbow colors indeed. <laughs> now what we want to show you is that there are different fruits and vegetables and they all have different colors. Now these colors that they have indicate a certain compound that is in them. We refer to them as antioxidants, mm -hmm. but there are specific ones in them based on the different colors. The reason why we're going to mention them is not to confuse you, but just to show you that when you see the different colors, it means there's something particular in them that makes them a particular color. Mm -hmm. So I want to start by mm -hmm. the, the red ones. We mentioned lycopene. Remember lycopene in red kind of fruits and vegetables, like you can see watermelon red like that, and tomatoes, and then also red and apple. Apples, yes. There are other red pepper and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. This lycopene has been shown to reduce your risk to prostate cancer, especially at, in men. Yes. And also we have the orange. Yeah. Okay, orange doesn't mean the orange fruit, but orange colored fruits. 
So carrots is one of them. You can see grapefruit here. Mango is part of them. Pawpaw is part of them. Yeah. Anything orange fleshed or yellow hue, yeah. that's your thing. And that has something we call beta carotene. It also helps a lot. Remember, there are some fruits and vegetables that are quite whitish or creamy. So this is um, garlic, mm -hmm. but we also have onion. Now, garlic and onions and the whitish type of fruits and vegetables have what we call indoles mm -hmm. and sophoranols. Mm -hmm. These are also important antioxidants that can reduce your risk to cancers. And the allicin in this type of group also help with blood pressure. That's yeah. why people keep saying garlic and blood pressure yeah. is key. But yeah. doesn't mean it solves everything. Now, we have the greens. Now, we know about folates and greens, right? Yeah. But now, what you didn't know is that these greens also have the indoles that you find here. But there are special kinds. They also have the carotenoids, other yeah. ranges of carotenoids that help protect us from cancers as well. So don't forget your greens, your contumere, your alefu, your ayoyo, and all other grain type of vegetables mm -hmm. and foods. They are so important to you. Yeah. Now I want to move on to the purple or the bluish. Yes. So this is purple. This is eggplant or aubergine, some mm -hmm. call it. Now it has been shown that these ones have special antioxidant called anthocyanin. Anthocyanin and phenolics <laughs> are also very good antioxidant that can reduce your risk to cancers. But if you can eat them raw, like I always say, why not? Why not? If you must cook them? Well, if you must cook them, don't overcook them mm. and use little water. Make sure you don't throw the water away after so that you can add it to the food because these antioxidants may be also in the water when you cook. At the end of the week, make sure you've gone through all the rainbow colors and you are guaranteed of good antioxidant levels in your food. So remember to eat healthy. Stay strong. And stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. But so, Muria, Mun said to me, fruit salad, be na. Yeah, to me. It's green, green, green. Mm -hmm. say, Very important. Uh, Nigeria for bitter leaf, you know. And you know, can't be. Patrick, you know, can't be green. Ah, yo, you're the most beautiful. Thank you. Eh, akwe ya sumpa. Eh, dani dani, you know, mumrana, mumeshe na yedi di mo, enko ye ma, se nebe ebe ni apomude. Uh, are we ready for 2559? Oh, yes, yes, we're very ready. Mm. Do we have questions already? Yes, we do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, we have a question from Fifi from Akwetia. Okay. He says, what is the cause of cancer? How does one prevent getting the disease? Mm. Mm. Thank you, Bright. I think I'll try and see whether I can, I can say something Please to do. help him. <laughs> right. So cancer is one of those diagnoses that you really don't want your doctor to tell you that you have. Nobody really wants it. Um, unfortunately, there are certain conditions that when a patient has them, tends to predispose them to getting cancers. First of all, what is a cancer? So a cancer is said to have occurred when cells in the body begin to grow faster uh, than they are expected to. Mm. And why would a cell begin to do that? Or what would make a cell why? decide, I'm going to grow? Yes. You know, cell growth in the body is programmed. The body tells cells grow and they grow, stop growing and die, and they stop growing and die. So there's a lot of order that goes on yes. in the body. Yeah. Now, if for some reason this order is, or is, is, is tampered with or there's an imbalance and the cell decides to go on a coup, that I'm saying the body says die and says I'm not going to die. Or the body says now stop growing, says so I'm not going to stop growing, mm. I'm going to keep growing. Then depending on which organ in the body that is happening, you can have the cancer in that area. The sad thing with cancers, especially the bad ones, because they are good ones. I mean, sometimes the growth is there, it stays there, and doesn't cause too many problems. Other ones would multiply and spread to various other organs. So if the cancer started, say, in your liver, by the time you realize it's in your lung, it's in your brain, and it's causing problems in those areas. So as I was saying, there are certain conditions that a patient might have that would make certain cells decide we won't die, we'll keep growing. For example, certain infections. We know that infections like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, can cause these changes in the liver mm -hmm. and lead to liver cancer. We also know that cancers like cancers of the cervix, cervical cancer, which is probably the number two uh, commonest killer, uh, you know, cancerous origin among women, is associated with human papilloma virus, which is an infection that tends to fester in the area of the cervix. Mm. So those are some of the reasons why people, you know, would develop cancers. And there are various different, different types of cancers. So how do you sort this out? 
how do you prevent this? Obviously, it becomes difficult to prevent every form of cancer. Really, you don't know when the cell is deciding, I'm going to multiply, I'm mm. not going to die. But we do know that certain screening tests are available, which can help you to pick it up really early. And when it's very early and it hasn't spread to so many areas, the outcomes are better when we treat. You know, the options are surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, so many things that when you go to the hospital can be done to help salvage the situation. So screening programs must be highlighted, must be emphasized, must be drummed home so that everybody, you know, takes precaution as far as certain cancers are concerned. So learn to examine your breasts, do that pap smear to look at your cervix, mm. screen for hepatitis B, so many things that can be done with different, different cancers so that we can pick it early and the patient's life is spared. Wow. So there are a Do few things. Anything? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, there are a few things that puts a person at risk of cancer. We have two categories: the modifiable factors and those that you can't modify. There are unmodifiable factors. So naturally, as you age and you grow old, your risk of developing a cancer increases. Again, if somebody in your family, especially somebody who is like your mother, your father, your sister, or your brother, has had cancer, it means your chances also are okay. increased. Exactly. Wow. Now, things that are uh, modifiable are your lifestyle. Mm. You know, there are certain foods that predispose you to getting cancer. Certain uh, things you do like smoking, alcohol. Again, obesity mm. is something also that increases your chances of getting cancer. Mm. So it's these things that you look at that if you find that you're indulging in activities that can predispose you or uh, perhaps, let's say you have it running your family, somebody in your family has had it, it just tells you that you have to be more cautious and take what Dr. Abba said seriously. That is screening, check, you know, periodically, then you go and check. So it's very advisable that naturally, as we're all growing old, you become more concerned about these things and take precaution by screening to see if perhaps it's creeping up. Because the thing about cancer is that once it's caught up early, it can actually be cured. But then if you don't catch it early, then you just have to manage it and eventually the unfortunate happens. Wow, they say chemo is a killer before the killer. <laughs> How true is that? Just briefly, we need to really rush into the adults' session. I mean, no, yes, so session. that is their perception because our people, or many people don't seek help early. Mm. And so by the time they come, most of the cancers are advanced that surgery may not help. So our only option is chemo. And you know, chemo is like using very strong medications to attempt to kill the cancer cells. But these medications are able to say, okay, this is cancer cell, let me kill it. This is a normal cell, no. So they eventually kill most cells that are fast growing in the body. And so if you don't report early, already the cancer has weakened your body. And the chemo is finishing those cells again. So your body will feel the effect a lot more than if you came earlier. Then the chemo is a lot easier on you and you're able to handle it better. And of course, the outcomes tend to be a lot better. Thank you so much, doctors. Uh, more questions in the AB or Hopa. Now, so Emmy said, Your doctors now will born in our tofa. Nyoma canyina, if a questions are Aka, a big DD, whom come on in. I need to may may assure pass it. Wafa, BB, Eddie, a free mo. Ye bab you moi. Ye bab we moi. You be young penny for qua at na TV. It sounds a baby a year corner. A adults only. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. It's adults only. Na ye be some say a quine de moana. Yanko, baby, I All right. Doctors. All right. A quine de, a quine de. Maybe I come up. There's a really interesting <laughs> one here. I think that okay. a lot of people are very interested in finding out what the answer would be. So, an anonymous call, um, writer says I started having sex from a young age and I love it. Mm. And because of that, I'm unable to keep to one sexual partner. Sir? But I've been told that that can put me at risk of some cancers, specifically cervical cancer. Is that true? What will I do? Oh dear. Yeah. And you're true. Uh, very true. It's ah, an important question. Ah, yes. We, we, we know that cervical cancer, which is the second common cancer among women in Ghana, has so many risk factors that are important factors that once we're able to address them, we can keep 
the prevalence of this cancer. Mm. Cervical cancer basically is a cancer that affects the mouth of the womb. If you can see from the screen, the womb has a tiny mouth. I'm just going to show this, Dr. Bright, you push okay. the other one for sure. me. Easy. <laughs> so this is a picture of the womb, and this area here is the mouth of the womb, which is the cervix. Mm -hmm. And this small organ here catches cancer, and that is the number two killer cancer among women in Ghana. Mm. And that cancer starts, if you see the second one, it starts mm. off slowly. You see the color has mm. changed. Then it is spreading. This one is pushing down into the vagina. Then here, apart from that, it is going into the rest of the womb. And from there, wow. it spreads to the liver, to the spine, to the brain, to the lungs. And then it's taking you away gradually. Huh. And so this cancer is related to those who have sex very early. Because the cervix, which is the mouth of the womb, is not matured at a time. So there's some particular virus that gets access to that place and changes the cells there to become cancerous. And that can go on for 10 to 15 years without giving the woman any symptoms. By the time you come with this symptom, you have had this infection for more than 10, 15 years. And so apart from having sex early, having multiple sexual partners, if you are immunosuppressed or if you don't use sexual, uh, if you don't use protection, unprotected sex, those who have so many children, more than five, or those who smoke, like we have said, they are all at risk of catching this cancer. Mm. The worst part is, if you have this cancer growing in your cervix, and you do the regular screening test we do, pap smear, just five minutes, we take a, a brush to brush the cervix, mm. put it on the slide, take it to mm. the lab. It says, ah, few cancer cells. Mm. We quickly go and deal with it, you're saved. And we say every year, let's do that two, every two to three years. Then every other place in the developed world, that is what has saved them from cervical cancer. So she's very right. Mm. She has mm. to stop changing boyfriend. Mm. And the risk <laughs> is if you have your boyfriend who also has other sexual partners, you are equally at risk. Mm. So, <laughs> so, I don't some no. Gloria, then can I ask, me, so would it be right to say that um, cervical cancer is sexually transmitted. Is yes, it? that's what we say ah. in about 99.8% of cases, it is sexually transmitted. transmitted. Mm. Ah. So no sexual activity, no cervical cancer. Bah. Sexual activity with protection, say using condoms, is protected. Wow. Mm. So I guess the take home is uh, regular screening. Every time, just check it. So about how frequent? Every two years? Every two to three years? Yes. If you do the first one and it's normal, we share it every two to three two years. years. Okay. That is great. Mm -hmm. Good. <sighs> do we have any more questions? We have a last question here, which is from Eric. Eric says, should I be worried if I have less frequent early morning erections? I think there's a cause for concern. Mm -hmm. every, every time mm. you wake up in the morning, you want to look down and know that everything is still in order. So sometimes you do wake up and you realize that it's down. It shouldn't necessarily mean that there is a problem. But then I think truly that if you realize that this is being too persistent, that you should get it checked out. You know, there are quite a number of conditions that can actually affect the male hormone and cause it to drop. And usually when this level of uh, male hormone called testosterone has dropped down, uh, it could also, it could therefore affect you having your erections. So, but if let's say, apart from the fact that in the morning you don't get an erection, but obviously when you get to your partner, you have your erection, everything is fine. But if you realize that again, you go to your partner and you're not getting an erection, that's a problem, mm. okay? So I think indeed, this is something men we don't like to joke with. So if you feel there's a problem, just please come to the hospital, let's do a lab test, check a few things, ask a few questions. And then if there's anything, we'll surely get it sorted out. So we have Bema, sorry, I'm not I was saying to me, you know. So. And yet, the beer, to the beer, and you know. But you should not eat what you know. And you know, and not just say, and be be a white man, you know. Ayo. Anna, Gloria, don't you wonder, from what age does it start? Mm -hmm. Are you expecting, mm -hmm. say, I expect that when I wake up in the morning, I should get that? Usually from the age of sexual maturity. Uh. So from puberty. puberty. So yeah. you get three to five erections overnight. 
the oh, last one happens just before you wake before up, you like wake up. Bright spoke about. But some oh. children get it, is it true? <laughs> uh, the children's one is a reflex. Ah. So it's not really, uh, should I say, sexually stimulated. Ah. Mm. But it's just a reflex yeah. from probably the underwear rubbing and that's ah. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when they went to Wii Wii Dr. Promis, you won't say, your car, yeah, cervical cancer, more as a man, frequent sex. I said, uh, it, 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 it protects against prostate cancer. I don't know. Sunday, yeah, been on so. Eh, sawo, right? A research, big research, me and Ubia, yeah, 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 Harvard and yeah, yeah, Australia. And uh, yeah, who say, who ejaculated by 21 times <laughs> in a month, uh, you have some small protection against prostate cancer. But I know it's just the fun, the fun aspect. That's why everybody's happy about it. Me name Chenu Swinton, I was beside. You know, but there are other more important things that we can do or not do to protect against uh, prostate cancer rather than going to have plenty sex. Mummy, I'm sure you ain't here. Ni aba wadi awose. Osha si ache na ugusu aye no. Ese sasi semu ya so be brave. Omo di ane ti ni a doctor for a can send a be ya. Uh, you won't be at risk. Well, I read is next to throw more light on self breast examination. Let's go for that. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of I read. Today, we talk about breast cancer. Though it can affect both men and women, it is more common among women in Ghana. Early detection through self examination can help reduce risk. Here is how to perform a self exam. Step one. Begin by looking at your breasts in a mirror with your shoulders high and your arms tight on your hips. Step 2. Now raise your arms and look for any changes. Step 3. While you are at the mirror, look for any signs of fluid coming out of one or both nipples. Step 4. Next, while lying down, feel the whole of your breast using your right hand to feel your left breast and then your left hand to feel your right breast. Use a firm, smooth touch with the first few fingers of your hand keeping the fingers flat and together in circular motions. Step 5. Finally, fill your breast while you are standing or sitting. Cover your entire breast using the same hand movements described in Step 4. Here's what you should look for. A breast lump or thickening that feels different from the rest of the breast. Bloody discharge from the nipple. Change in the size or shape of the breast. Changes to the skin over the breast like the skin of an orange or dimpling. And inverted nipple. Report any changes you may notice to your doctor as soon as possible. So you see, it's not really rocket science now, is it? Asu, yes. kindly buy me a few more things. I'll send you the money one by one. So that I don't mix them up. Okay, ma. For 10 Ghana cities not topping up, not a fresh life, white and brown feathered cockerel. Holding up mommy's singing voice. No, I will go flow. I want you to buy me some red salty solo beef. Why don't you send all the money at once so you don't have to pay any extra charges? With Vodafone Cash Amoto, I pay only three CDs a month and I can send any amount as many times as I want at no extra cost. Register for Vodafone Cash on Star 110 Hash for three Ghana CDs per month. Vodafone Cash, seek a summer yet day. Buy pepper. Original red mocha show. The future is exciting. Ready? So let's go to the corner where we talk about the kids' health issues and our doctors are ready to throw more light mm. on what we are discussing today. Mm. Doctor Pro Promise, yeah. Yes, yeah, so today on the agenda for discussion, what we call congenital birth defects or babies born with abnormalities in general. Is it an issue of having becoming common these days? Because we are tending to see a lot. Babies are born with a very huge head. Some don't have head at all. Mm -hmm. Some don't have the, the leg. Somebody's leg is pointing the wrong way. Mm. Dr. Abba, what's yeah, the problem? problem? I know, promise. It, it is true. I, I think earlier on we were talking about it and we, we were wondering whether because of improvement in healthcare facilities, women are now delivering in the hospital. So these things are coming to light more. But whatever the issue is, Having a baby with birth defects can be devastating, you know, yeah. for any family that's yeah. expecting a healthy baby. And the issue would then be why? What did I do wrong? Or what should we have done right? And a lot of the time, it's not anything that you could have done. In fact, can I just mention this? A lot of, well, the reason why a lot of women have miscarriages before they actually even have these babies is to get rid of 
fetuses that are born with defects before they grow and are born. That is the natural way of getting or getting rid of pregnancies that are not correct or that are not um, near perfect, to, 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 for lack of a better expression. So that's one way of dealing with the problem. The other issue, however, is that there are genetic defects that may not kill the fetus once in the womb, but the baby will be born and then will show defects in certain critical organs. So like Promise was talking about, some babies are born with really huge heads or heads without the skull or problems with their spine or minor ones like extra digits or low set ears or abnormalities in the limbs. You know, some children are born with feet that actually point like this. So anything that a baby presents with at birth, which is not what you are expecting, could be classified as a birth defect. Some of them uh, would eventually lead to the demise of the baby because you can't live. I mean, can you imagine you're born with what you call hypoplastic lungs? Your lungs, where you breathe air into, have not grown. How are you going to survive? Mm -hmm. But other ones, once you seek adequate health care or adequate um, professional help, a lot can be done to help to support the family and the baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one thing to also note is that usually these things, although the majority, majority of them happen through no fault of the mother. There are some things that indeed the mother probably does that predisposes her to it. Mm. You know, that's one thing that we try to always advise women to go for antenatal. Mm. Because when you get pregnant and you have uncontrolled diabetes, especially within the early part of your pregnancy, this is one of the things that actually causes a lot of birth defects, okay? Then obviously the mothers who are drinking during the pregnancy, mm. smoking during the mm. pregnancy. And you Drunk. know, it's, Something we also always advise that during your pregnancy, you must have started your folic acid and your iron. Now, folic acid is something that goes a long way to prevent a lot of these birth defects. Okay, so we advise that even before you want to get pregnant, start taking your folic acid. Mm. During the pregnancy, continue to take it through to the end. Mm. And these are things that at least you can do to prevent uh, seeing a lot of these birth defects in children. Mm -hmm. oh. wow. And now during pregnancy, mm. once a woman is coming for antenatal, we have advanced scan machines. Mm -hmm. Around the fifth month, do a detailed scan. You know, then we're able to pick it up that, oh, this baby has got a big head full of water instead of brain. Mm -hmm. Then we talk oh. to the mother, talk to the father, this is what we have on our hands. What do we do? Or this baby has this problem with the heart or with the spine or with the legs. Then we can all plan, discuss the options and plan what to do or what preparations to do towards the baby's delivery. The most important thing that we can do is encourage all the women to, like Dr. Bright said, start folic acid, or even if possible, if you have some medical condition that puts you on some medication, before you get pregnant, see the doctor. Mm. Because some medications are just not safe to be taken and you get pregnant. Mm. And so we'll change it for you. Medications, some blood pressure medications, mm -hmm. some thyroid disease medications, some people who have epilepsy, some of those medications, they are just too dangerous for babies. And so, the little we can do to prevent those that we can is mm. let's get to see professionals, change some of medications, put us on folic acid before the pregnancy. And when the pregnancy comes, regular antenatal care. Okay. Uh I say uh will be on fire of no for na or shall say so per se or DB can your fun noir. Now on the no near ma the near my bishop says you are a come on the mamma fran a bar. Yeah, yeah, herbal true. medication teach mm. you and it causes her problem. Mm. Oh, because mm. herbal medication, but you don't know what else it is doing to the other organs in your body, especially to the little tiny mm. fetus. Mm. Herbal medication, baby. So baby now we will hear Baby, now by with all sorts of defects. You know, I'm a bounce one I'm a bounce one of you. 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 I'm a yeah, that's it, Bria, Doctor Four. Eh, Marsha, you're more friend of mine. Fe, 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 fe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 
Me nimse sabre di esene e o share no last week no. O chen a share ye nia Vodafone anam a doctor for e de a yare share e de a brand no. Na enen so e bi e si e pa a ye de e brand wo. Enunti mumi yonko share mra ni e ba ye wani ama bibri a ye be catch up. My name is Elvina Nade de Mensa. I am 15 years old and I'm a student of Dansuma Community Basic School and I'm informed to. I call now our hospital. No, me wa na doctor ne de me ba ne bechre me say eh me ba ne e wo problem e wo ne nine. Me ya bi e nti jama no ne ma na eche me e ka o e to e ke na ainsh e ka o. If you look at the work and eyes, yeah, you can eyes him. I used to close from work very late. Coming home, I just came across her. I decided to probe further to know why a girl of her age would be lurking around that time of the day. It was late, and he asked me why I'm outside, and I told him I came to help the lady in the house. So he started chatting with me, and he was friendly to me. We used to have a tenant here, but um, she slept. She was washing her dishes outside here. And I was like, who is this girl doing this job at this time of the night? It's so late. So I asked her and she said um, she'll be paid one CD. And that is going to help her take to school the following day. I was like, wow, just one CD. Is that why you are here at this time of the night? And my wife agreed me. Take her in to help her. All along, I thought she was a sports girl. That is why she used to wear the socks. When, when I was about to show it to them, I was afraid because my friends made me believe it was dangerous and I was abnormal. So I felt so scared to show it to them. She said, "Oh, she wants to say something to me outside." So I walked with her outside, and she said she has a problem with her legs. That is why she doesn't wear shoes. Some of my friends feel pity for me, but other ones, they think I'm abnormal, so they don't get close to me. Comparing her results after she came to stay with, with, with us and the previous results, I'm like, whoa, there's something good with this girl, and she needs to be helped. When he told me that Vodafone Helpline has offered to help with the medical bills, um, to do the surgical operation of for El Elvina and I see it as a, a very timely intervention and we are most grateful to God for coming to Elvina's aid through Vodafone Healthline. One and a half hours, one and a half to two hours, it's more than four hours. 
Surgery went well, but technically difficult, especially on the left side. The right side was okay. They were done just as expected. But on the left, it was technically difficult. Oh yes, I'm happy. I'm happy. Apart from the challenge, but that's what life is all about. And uh, yes, challenges and how to get over them, that's what life is all about. Yeah, Papa Joseph Waha and uh, your yeah, mommy, so Harriet Ewaha. How is life after this surgery? How do you see the whole transformation like? Uh, like mm. Mm. Life has been a lot better mm. till now, yes. In Niji and Kuma and Abefi. Ah, as a shabby fraud, then be a now wash socks now watching socks now named for four shisha and Pabua. No, no, dear Aj and Bem and Pabua. I told the Bikra and Pabuano. Aj a costre shoemaker no. No, much a die, I said, I yeni diamano. A tete, a tete. But for that from Bermuno. Hm. And your master, sir, be be a yakama. I must say, Niji and Abefi. Yeah, then you may ask. The results crowd, the bar last time, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, what you mean, sir? And such a no abwe room. And come here, yeah, be so, sir. So, say, they are so oko school. I just saw the results of Papa Befi. Now, oko school, no class, and call extra classes. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, um, yeah, Baba, yeah, Mammy Harriet, so what can you add to what Joseph said? Thank you. Um, Pacho de Macane say, Yenya or do Emma will be beer. It's not only your family members, mm. and now be a one cassa watch him now, and quan or be your or do. A man, send ye a tea beer, send a voda phone for eighteen year share. I am my eno. Yes, you and two and a money and ye mo beer. Now, a better mo, I'm my yen yen share. I'm a voda phone for answer so ako so aboy. Yo, that's it, baby. That's it. We will be, we shall be there, yeah. And I want to be there, yeah, yeah. Now let's talk to Elvina. Elvina, how are you? Ah, how are you? How do you feel, my dear? Please, I feel very happy. You feel happy. You have to show the happiness. My young one said, you feel really happy. And see, I mean, the excitement and everything. My young, my, and I went in here. I don't think as a day now, we've been so well with TBN and Muno Shayaya or no swing and race. You move so what in a major and I say, No one who say, Eh, and it does well, a man, ain't it? Cassadi, speak out. All right, how do you feel? Please, I feel very happy now. I can go out and wear shoes. Yeah, well, so you find it easy wearing your own shoes. Young Cosre, a shoemaker, be an why you choose the amount. Wow. And so, what are some of the things you weren't able to do? And they say they would me a pa shoes, none and I want to me say. Ne how? We all buy papa, so we shoes. I would not guarantee so. Nothing, we shall have a for a want to me and she be. It's in the same pan and I am. I am now rare hope. That's his idea. Any job, any job, I won't swear a February. Okay, all right. Um, we'll, we'll come back to Elvina and the parents. But uh, our doctor Bright is here, and so we'd like to know. Um, Dr. Bright has been following this, you know, uh, for the time being, and uh, we'd like to know. Yes, I have, Gloria. Have? Thank you very much. Mm. Um, there's one thing I really realized about Vina that she's quite a very brilliant young girl, mm. you know. Obviously. And to have mm. had this problem, which is solvable, almost take away her opportunity to education oh. and becoming somebody who would excel in life would have been very painful. Yeah. But obviously, thanks to Vodafone, Vodafone has been doing this for so long, you know, bringing that very, very much needed intervention into the lives of people. And we're glad that the spotlight fell on uh, Elvina. And today we see her much better, more confident, very happy. This happiness has extended to the family. It, it has extended to us here in the studio. But the most excited of all is Vodafone. They are very excited that mm. Elvina is doing much mm. better and has returned mm. uh, to the best states. Vodafone is still supporting her and has a small present for her. And this is to continue to see Elvina. her through that process. Yeah. 
of recovery. So I'll give this to Elvina since she's a big girl now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So this is from Vodafone. Vodafone is excited at the turn of events and they wish you all the best wow. in everything you do. Wow. What okay. do you have to say? Elvina, <sighs> uh, Sister Harriet, and then uh, Joseph. We're so grateful to Vodafone. Mm. We're so, so, so grateful. Things like this usually don't happen. Yeah. So for us, it's a miracle. Indeed. Yes, we're mm. grateful to Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Continue watching the football match on my phone? Yes! Go! <laughs> now by dialing star 900 hash, you can actually move data from your Vodafone fixed broadband onto your Vodafone number. Anytime, anywhere. Aseti, Esu, Akasa. For almost a decade now, supporting the vulnerable in times of need has been a pleasure for Vodafone. Your favorite TV program, Vodafone Healthline, is back with more refreshing episodes. This season, we bring you life-transforming surgeries, workout sessions with our fitness instructors, and insightful tips from our nutrition experts, along with our new set of doctors and an awesome host who will address all your health concerns. Vodafone Healthline. Showing this and every Monday at 9 p.m. on UTV. The future is exciting. Ready? Okay, Vodafone Healthline. And I had a bremo. And na me name set my son yama be brave. And the free one. Yes, I see and say. And unti man yau say eh. What what should be brave? Be asa. What should be brave? Ya we be brave. I had a bremo. A weeks in a day. A dozen. And unti the obey ane say obey aso. Na wo what what train train? A da ya be yeno. Na what na say. And now it's me afraid when you be now on us with Drew Swa. What be she be now a buono where the apomudin kwa and a vodafone ever she ama a CP ama a na season way. What more but I a pan a say one more shama and ma and a more frap or mudin titru a CP now on the ape nipumesi bre. You better vodafone as say. Near the doctor say, for one so I say, eh, oh my dear P, and then send the brain now, and we say, I'm a boss of power, and so your nutrition since when so, oh my bed, three be the achay and palma, you who you did dear Musane, you be see a she, a dear fa, I be boy. Say program ye a co ye ma, oh dear, and if you wouldn't be a, not catch any say, a sem debbie, abba, Vodafone, dear sem debbie, abba gana, and with your no so, that's a ne, on shabby. Na emwano. Thanks to Vodafone. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? Well, don't forget that your first wealth is your health. My name is Gloria, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Future is exciting. Ready?